developers of all ages, of all locations. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I have a very special guest with me today. Let's just make sure you can hear me first before I get too crazy. Can you all out there in YouTube land hear me and see me? It looks like I can see myself. That's a good sign, right? I am pleased to welcome all of you here. Let's see if we have anyone. We have any mods in the chat today? I have the greatest announcement, perhaps of 2020. Haseen, hello, hello, hello. Let me get organized here, make sure everything is sounding and looking okay, if you can hear me and see me. And I wanted to kick it off a few minutes early. I know we're gonna start at 10, but just you know, give a few minutes for people to roll in because Angela Yu, the one and only, Angela Yu is here with me today. In fact, I just checked my Zoom details and she is in the waiting room, waiting anxiously, I'm sure, to talk about this new course. She has a Python course on Udemy. It is killer. We're gonna go through it. So here's what's gonna happen today. Uh, let me just make sure I'm getting, I'm getting some signal here. Hey, oh wow, everyone, look at all these people. Donovan, I, that's great to see you. I thought I thought maybe you're going to be in a meeting or something. Oh, in five minutes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks for showing up anyway. Great to see you here. Uh, Yvonne, Andrea, Zen Masters, Dante690. Oh, we got a lot of people here. This is great. Ryo, what's up? Good morning, everyone. Okay, so you can hear me and see me. This is a good thing. Let's talk about this thing. So I have Angela Yu, as I said, in the waiting room, confirmed. She's here. I'm so excited. I did not sleep one wink last night, no lie. I've been up since 8 p.m. last night. I'm just so excited to chat with her. Before we do, though, I'm going to show you this course. I'm going to share the screen. Um, this course is just blasting off in popularity. I saw it has already like 50,000 students, um, and it's not been out that long. I think maybe like two or three months give or take, like it's really heating up. Uh, but I wanna share it with you because a lot of people here are interested in Python. We also have some questions. I'm gonna be asking her from you guys in my community section the other month. It was uh, maybe like a couple weeks ago, I asked you for some questions to give to Angela. So she's gonna be answering those questions and I have a few questions on my own. I'm going to ask her about the course, all right? I got to deep breathe here. I brought two beverages today just because I knew things were going to get crazy. <laughs> Pastic, Pasticois? I don't know. How, is that French for watermelon? Sorry. LaCroix and my standby, my st standby, my standby drink, Living in Gratitude. Yes. 2020, believe it or not, ha there, there is a lot to be grateful for in 2020. It's been a crazy year. We have a few more weeks of it, like two weeks in a day or something, and then it's over. I'll drink to that. Cheers. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in today. Holy smokes, what an audience. Uh, not even 10 o'clock yet. I wanna, I wanna wait right until 10 because that's when we promised we'd go live with this. But let me just give you a little preliminary introduction to the course. We'll go over this again. Uh, throughout this review. But the name of this course, if you want to go to Udemy and follow along or check it out, it's called 100 Days of Code, the Complete Python Pro Bootcamp for 2021. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, I want to get, it's, it's 9.59. I have one minute left and then I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. Let me get my screen share ready here and we'll be ready to go right at 10. Share screen, Google Chrome. I've been trying to use Brave with, with uh, Google and Zoom, I mean, YouTube and Zoom, but I've been having some sort of problems with it. So unfortunately, having to go back to Chrome here, but that is a dorky side note. All right. Can everyone see the screen? I, I got to take this incrementally just because I'm just, I'm kind of reclaimed here. So I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. It is 9.59 in how many seconds? We need the grand countdown here. Let me, let me wet the old whistle. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. Welcome developers, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for tuning in to this wonderful live stream. I'm RTC. 
I have a website, realtoughcanny.io, but that's not why we're here today. We are here today to show you a really good course on Udemy. We're also here to chat with one of the best, if not the best instructors on Udemy right now, Angela Yu. Okay, she's killing it. I Now let me give you a brief background of, of how I discovered Angela. I won't yak your ear off, but just to give some context. So I started web development in 2015 and I ended up discovering the Colt Steel Bootcamp. A few years later when I started this YouTube channel, it was then I discovered her bootcamp. Um, and her style is really unmatched. It's so high quality. And I know so many people have been asking me and telling me, RTC, you got to check out Angela, Angela Yu. So I am a latecomer to her courses. But since discovering that uh, bootcamp course, I have been a total fangirl. She does amazing work. Uh, Udemy is very lucky to have her. Uh, and if you've been on YouTube for any amount of time, I'm sure you've seen uh, her commercial, uh, courtesy of Udemy. It has the white background and I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's Angela, that's Angela, that's Angela. Like, she is everywhere. So this is her new course. It is called 100 Days of Code, the Complete Python Pro Bootcamp for 2021. She also has a really good iOS course. She has a bunch of different courses. You should check them out. Uh, if you're, they're, they're really newbie friendly without stalling at the newbie phase, if that makes sense. She also has really good graphics. That's just in general with, with all of her courses. Um, so this weekend, and actually a few days prior to that last week, I've been dipping into this course and exploring it and seeing what all it's about. Because let's, it, let's face it, there's a lot of Python courses out there. If you're, if you're gonna make a Python course in 2020 going into 2021, like it's gotta be good. And fortunately for everyone involved, this is really, uh, not just a high quality course, it's also very comprehensive, uh, especially coming from a place like Udemy, where it is really hard to find those just home run courses. Uh, but if you stick with the instructor, like Angela, you'll be just fine. So what I'm saying is, there are a lot of Python courses out there, but if you're new to Python, if you're new to development, um, if you're new to certain uh, methods, with Python or how should I say this? Different niches and things to do. Here's what I'm trying to say. Let me just let me just put it this way. This course goes over web scraping, um, data science, scripting, games, web development, big sections on web development. She talks about the different frameworks um, going into Flask. Oh yeah. Templating with Jinja and Flask, like really kind of getting into it. And um, let me back up though. So going back to this thing about, you know, if you're going to put out a Python course, you better, you better come correct with it. The organization and the concept behind this course is really different from the other ones I've seen, not just on Udemy, but everywhere. So it's based on this, this thing. The first time I saw it was on Twitter, the hashtag 100 days of code. Basically it's a coding challenge to yourself. You're not going to get fired if you don't do it. Uh, a challenge to yourself to code for hundred days straight. And so um, when, you, when you participate on Twitter, you don't have to be on Twitter, but when you do it on Twitter, you just like type what you did or write out what you did that day. So I studied uh, randomization and Python lists for an hour and a half and then hashtag 100 days of code. And so this way it's a challenge to yourself to get through whatever it is you're studying with code because it's tough. It's tough, and especially being a self-taught developer, having that motivation, not having someone right there beside you in real life saying, you better get to work, that you have to find that motivation somewhere and some, some sort of technique to keep going day after day. And so this is the first big thing that's, that stuck out to me uh, in this course. It's 100 sections. And right in the, the first part here, now I don't wanna get a copyright strike by playing too much. Uh, but this video right here, let me, oops, my bad. Let me go like this. So there's the 100 days of code uh, challenge she's talking about. But there's also, she also challenges you. <laughs> there is a printout where you promise yourself to at least put forth the effort for one hour a day. And if you do that, you're going to bang out this course. Now, mind you, 
This course has 675 lectures and 63.5 total hours of video. Massive, especially considering. So this, she does call this a, a boot camp because it is in the style of online boot camp courses where they're 40, 50, 60, sometimes more than 60 hours. And so the way it's organized really makes this number manageable. Um, if you just, you know, just do an hour a day, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be all in one sitting. You could do 15 minutes at breakfast, 15 minutes at lunch, half hour before bed, however you want to chop it up. But if you're doing an hour a day, by the end of those hundred days, you're, you're, you're going to be a different, you're going to be a new programmer. You're going to be a programmer. Um, and so let's go through the curriculum here. So you start out uh, with day one, obviously, section one. And like I said, each section is corresponds to a day. So section 79 means day 79 in this 100 day cycle. Now, I should point out that you don't have to do it in 100 days. It's just a, a technique to keep you motivated and getting you on the path to grind out the course and, and get these things in your mind and, you know, the neurons firing. So the first day, you're just kind of getting familiarized with how it's going to go. And then you're already doing some, some basic stuff that first day. You're printing to the, con in, to the console in Python. There's an interactive coding exercise. And these there's lots of exercises. And if you go down here to the resources folder, these are all links to REPL.IT. I think that's the site. Anyways, it links you to an interactive coding playground where you can uh, type out Python commands and you know whatever script you're working on. And it's all customized based on the challenge for that day. So you're for, if you end up banging out this first day one, you're doing a, you're doing a skills assessment, you're doing uh, different coding exercises, and you're also doing a project. Angela can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think there are 100, there, there's a project for every day. And that was big thing number two that stuck out, stuck, stuck out, <laughs> stuck out to me because some of these projects are, are just awesome. Um, you can forget the, just like, even the simple stuff is not boring. And sometimes that can be really, uh, an easy thing, like, okay, your first day, we're going to take it easy. You're going to just print to the console. Okay. That's your project, but no, uh, day one, project one is band name generator. So you build this random band name generator to print out these crazy band names. And that's just by your first day. And so there is that like almost instant reward you're getting doing it in this style. Uh, and so it continues D section two, day two beginner, um, and this is the other thing too. I don't know if you guys can see this. Each section um, describes what level it is. So there's beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So if you're a code newbie, obviously you're going to start up top here. And it, it's progressive. It's kind of like this progressive enhancement where about section, what, section 15, two weeks in, you're getting into the intermediate level. So section 17, day 17, the quiz project and benefits of OOP. She's going into it all developers, okay? OOP by day, day 17 or day 16. And tons of projects. Build the snake game part one, animation and coordinates. So this is just your, your third week in. Um, and some, in, some very good insightful lessons here too. Lecture 186 is called programming is not memorizing which is short and succinct and very true. It's, it's not about memorizing things. And I do appreciate that personal touch in this course. And I've seen this in our other courses too, where she'll pop on and give a word of motivation. Um, for some of her courses, she doesn't ask me anything, which is also a really nice touch. And she does one down here. Uh, let's see, in this bonus section, recording of our live AMA. And then this was a really fun video too. This was an hour and 41 uh, one minute, hour, 41 minute video called study with me. And she, she's just hanging out studying. It's like, okay, this is a really neat concept because again, going back to that thing of having a hard time finding motivation when you're doing it yourself, 
no, she's not right there in real life with you. But it sets the mood for like, okay, Angela's studying. Maybe I should get to it too. Hour and 41, let's do this. Um, there's a countdown timer right there. Just, you know, these little things that add up to create something that is just filled with benefits uh, that you just, you really don't see in any other courses, especially with Python. Again, I've seen a million Python courses, maybe even literally a million at this point. Uh, they're hard to make different because the basic stuff is always going to be the basic stuff. But to me, what really stood out, especially in the beginning here, was the amount of interactive exercises and the projects. So let's, let me pause this. Let me pause this and go down here talking about some of these other projects. So section 26, day 26, intermediate, uh, this is for intermediate level, list comprehension and the NATO alphabet. Let's go down here to the advanced. So right down here on day 58 is where you're gonna start the advanced stuff. And there is a capstone project. Uh, it's a blog that you're gonna be building. And all of these, by the time it gets to these advanced sections, uh, you're not watching hour long segments. Um, but these vid the videos themselves are not very long, but combined, you know, compared to the beginning of the course, you know, day one's like an hour or whatever. By the time you get down here, it's just a little intro and a little outro and you're on your own because at that point, you theoretically have the skills to start building these things. So this one is day 62, advanced. Flask, WTF forms, bootstrap and CSV, coffee and Wi-Fi project. Um, you're gonna be working the entire time in this course. And then finally, before the bonus section, there's, oh my gosh, you see all this stuff though? You see all these different, and this is, I don't know what, what number I'm on, three or four. The other, one of the other big things that stood out but this course is that it's not just data scraping, uh, which is awesome, like my big introduction I started, Python became more of a revelation once I started doing data scraping. And that to me was the gateway to really loving Python. Python is such an awesome language. Um, it's great for beginners, but also people who aren't beginners. Python was not my first language. I discovered it later on. I discovered it later on in my career, uh, but the versatility of it and that is really leveraged in this course because as you can see, you're even doing a freaking GUI desktop app. Uh, professional por Day 90 professional portfolio project, HTTP requests and APIs, uh, web scraping, GUI automation, game, web development, Python automation, data science. There was some, there was some other tool here I, that caught my eye. Maybe it's way, way up here. It wasn't Flask. I already mentioned that. <laughs> Twitter complaint bot. Section uh, 51, day 51, intermediate and internet speed Twitter complaint bot. Just like really fun projects. There is one here too. I don't know where it is. I came across it the other night, but uh, the scenario is that you're a real estate agent in Boston in 1970. And like the mood is set with this old school photo of all these you know, these land yachts of these Buicks driving around Boston. It was just... It, just really fun stuff. Um, and let's face it, a lot of this stuff, a lot of programming can be really dry. And that is something I think uh, intentionally for sure, Angela and her team worked on to make sure that this wasn't a bore. Uh, I mean, I if I was doing Python over, I certainly would get this course. Let me put it that way. Uh, Again, you don't have to, I, didn't, I shouldn't say again because I haven't said this in the first place, uh, but Udemy has free preview videos. I've had this course uh, for two weeks now. Like I said, I dove into it a lot last week and this weekend is just like, wow, for the price of a Udemy course, I mean, you can't go wrong. So do I recommend 100 Days of Code, the complete Python Pro Bootcamp for 2021? You betcha. And now, without further ado, I'm going to bring on the one and only Angela Yu. Let me bring her out of the waiting room here. Hopefully she didn't hang up on me. That would be really, really embarrassing. Let's see. Where am I here? Come on. Come back. Let's see. 
how do okay i'm screen sharing that's my problem jeez <laughs> i know how to work a computer promise okay stop the share all right i'm gonna admit angela we can get this popping off Hello, Angela. Can you hear us? Hey. Hey. How's it going? Good. 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 Thank you so much for showing up. What's that? <laughs> I've been tuning in to um, your review, and it's um, it's really great that you noticed all the parts that we like put some little thoughts into, like you know, like the the end of the the course where we have like the study with me thing. And um, yeah, it was really great. Yeah, at first I was like, what the, what is this? And I'm like, oh, okay. And like, like immediately it was just like the mood was set, you know, the lights are low, it's like very studious, very quiet. I'm like, nice, nice touch. <laughs> but yeah, so I have a few questions about the course. Yeah. Just to get some, yeah, just to get some more info. And then we have a few uh, student questions if you're down for answering those. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, Let's great. Go for it. All right. First question. So I just got done talking about this amazing course. What actually inspired you to create a Python course? So we actually set out um, not so much to make a Python course, but we wanted to make a course to teach people how to code, like from scratch. And we went through a couple of languages as um, like potential options. But in the end, it came down to what are the top CS universities using? So Stanford, MIT, they're all teaching Python in their intro to CS. Um, what's the most popular programming language on Stack Overflow? What do developers actually like to use? Python. Right. And then it's like, what is a language that can let us show people a range of things that you can do with programming. And again, the answer was Python, because we could show people how to do web development, how to do web scraping, how to build desktop applications, how to do data science, machine learning, like all of that could be achieved with this one language. And that's why we ended up creating a Python course. But at its core, it's the, you know, how do you go from zero to hero in programming when you don't really know where to start? Right. Yeah. And like you said, the, the language is just so versatile. You can do just about anything with it. And it's great for newbies and not just newbies, people who have been the, in, in the industry and you know looking for an, a new challenge or something more to do. Um, but you kind of touched upon this and I kind of talked about this in the review too, but what was your motivation for structuring it this way with the hundred days of code? So, I mean, I didn't invent the 100 days of code. It's something that's been um, a movement amongst people learning to program for a long time. And, you know, when we do our in-person boot camps and people always ask me, like, how can I get really good? Well, the answer is practice. Well, how can I practice? Well, the answer is 200 days of code. Build one project every single day for 100 days. And by the end, you're going to be so damn good. But then the question is like, well, what do I build? Like, I don't know what to build. And then when they have an idea, it's like, oh, this is too hard for my current level. And I don't know enough to do this. So we kind of ended up doing it in this format because we wanted to build the knowledge base first and then get people to practice it in coding exercise it and then really like put it into action by building that project every single day. And it's also like something that like if I thought back to myself when I first started learning to code, a lot of stuff was like, yeah, you can do this with maths, you can do like this kind of thing, but it was kind of boring, like to be honest. Right, right. And like I wanted it to be fun. So yeah. And it is like like I was saying before, that that 1970, just like these twists you wouldn't expect. Like you're a real estate agent in Boston in 1970. I'm like, I am? All right, we're gonna do this. It's just like really fun projects. And you know, I've been through course because I'm not a self-taught developer. And so going through a lot, I've went burned through a lot of courses. And one of the the just kind of nail in the coffin is when the projects are just so dry and you know the instructor's trying hard but it's like uh, it's really hard to get into um but this way it's like it's not just the projects are snappy but if you don't like it you can just move on to the next one or you know just skip it for a day and come back the next day and pick up where you left off and also too i notice in in the organization you have labels of beginner intermediate and advanced so people kind of know what they're getting into before they even jump into it 
Yeah, I mean, like, I think for somebody who's a, you know, more intermediate program, somebody who's done a little bit of Python, then, you know, you kind of want to be able to jump into a point that's not too easy, not too hard. So we actually have this, like, uh, placement test at the beginning where we can figure out where you can dive straight into um, and, like, find the part of the course that's right for your level as well. Awesome. So I'm a web developer by trade, and I saw you had some pretty hefty modules on Flask. So can you explain, we have a lot of web developers in the audience today. Can you tell me what Flask is and how that relates to web development? Yeah, so Flask is a web development framework. And I guess if you're coming from the JavaScript world, um, it's kind of a bit like Node, right? Um, now we kind of thought about like, how do we teach web development? And obviously there's one part, which is the web design, the HTML, CSS, which you can't really get away from, but then there is the back end part. And we really had a tough time deciding between teaching Django or Flask because they're both Python frameworks, right? And they're both equally popular, but we ended up going for the, option which allowed people to see more under the hood because the thing about Django is that it um, it does a lot of stuff for you which is great if you understand everything was going on but with Flask you really get to learn like the fundamentals of what's actually happening because it's so lightweight it doesn't really have um, much opinion it um, you know it's kind of like plug and play you can plug in whatever you want to achieve your goals. And that just means that we can teach people like what's actually happening under the hood. And then once they're up and running with Flask, then jumping to Django is not, not a difficult um, sort of task. Right. So that was like the motivation behind teaching Flask. Okay, awesome. And then, so just to recap, what are some projects uh, students can expect when they, when they go through the, the Flask modules? Yeah, um, so we, we kind of, you know, try to keep it fun. And um, like, I was looking around the web for like, for example, Product Hunt and AppSumo, like what are some websites that people have built, like web apps that are not too hard, like it won't take too long to build, but also kind of interesting. So one idea that we had was a cheap flight um, uh, project where you sort of do a little bit of API stuff, you do a little bit of web scraping and you find the um, cheapest price for a particular destination you wanna go to. So Python's in the background, like checking every single day. And then once it hits a value that's lower than, you know, what you wanted to pay for your flight ticket, it will then um, hit you up. And, um, in addition, like we obviously have like the prerequisite REST API, blog projects, um, but there's there's a couple of funny ones in there for people to discover as well. Awesome. Yeah. And it's not just what I like too about it too. It's not just one project like, oh, on to the next thing. It's like here you're going to be doing multiple projects in different contexts with these technologies. So it's not just, you know, do it one day and forget it. Uh, so that was something I noticed too. Uh, I wanted to switch now to some of the student questions we had about your course. Uh, one of the ones I got was, what are Python's pros and cons versus JavaScript or other languages? So Python has a lot of pros, um, but it's, you know, the, the sort of pros that I would say are, it is super versatile. Like, you know, similar to you, Python's not my first programming language either. But when I discovered it, it was like, wow, this is like really nice. It's got all the features that you would want and it can be applied to so many things. So, you know, one of my sort of passion languages is Swift. And as much as everybody loved it, there weren't enough people to jump on the bandwagon to start creating frameworks, creating tools um, for like server side stuff. So with Python, you know, there is the web, there is the server stuff, there is the data science kind of packages, and there's just a big community. Like it's so popular and you have so many people who can help you out there. That's one of like the big pros. Mm. Um, other sort of um, cons I would think are, you know, you, if you're coming from a different language and you're tackling this, especially if you're from like... Um, maybe something that does things a little bit differently. So for example, um, 
in if you're coming from a, a strongly typed um, language, you might find um, Python a little bit weird. Um, but also, you know, it it's it has its limitations, right? Like it can be used for all sorts of things, but you probably don't want to be making like a mobile app with Python. You probably want to keep to its strengths, um, which is in the industry, mostly data science, machine learning, and web development, I would say. Right. Awesome. So the, super the- versatile, but some quirks in there as well. Excellent. All right. Yeah, the other thing I noticed too, when I first started with Python, that just just popped out right away was the syntax was just so silky compared to JavaScript. Yeah. It was just not clunky, not as clunky as JavaScript and not at all. And it's just like, I'm going to keep going with this and see what it can do. And like we've been talking about, it's just so versatile uh, for any level developer. Uh, the next question I have is I have been learning Python for some, some months. However, I find it very difficult to maintain consistency. Do you think your Python course can make me more disciplined? I like coding, but my lack of discipline is ruining everything. So, I mean, I think as you say, motivation for learning programming is probably the hardest thing. Like it is hard. The actual learning the programming, the actual doing the programming, I would say is like second place to just the motivation, right? Like especially if you're somebody who has school or your work and you come home and you're like, should I watch Netflix or should I learn programming? Like right. it takes a really determined individual to be like, yeah, I'm going to learn programming. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like one of the, the things that we really thought about is again, coming back to this idea of designing the curriculum so that it is uh as manageable as possible, basically. So each day is capped. So when we did uh, student testing, it was capped to about two hours. So you shouldn't have to spend more than two, two and a half hours on each day. And the promise of each day is that you will be building a different brand new project. So every single day you get something new to look forward to. If you didn't like the project yesterday, you got a new one tomorrow. So, right. you know, it's, it's fast paced like that. And also, you know, the idea is kind of like it's, you know, when we're looking at uh, movies these days, right, like the editing is kind of a lot more slick. It is more animation. There's more things moving. And we really tried to bring that kind of um, spark to like an online course. It doesn't have to be like PowerPoint bullets. It can also be programming concepts that's animating on screen, that's got sound effects, that's like fast cuts. And after each sort of short section, learning something new, you're diving in, practicing it in a coding exercise, you know, build a prime number checker, build a um, leap year checker. And then once you've really understood the sort of programming side, then it's, you know, you're being thrown into a project. It's like, here's a project that's right for your level right now. So the idea is sort of move people through different things quickly, getting them to do things that they find fun and giving, giving them things to look forward to to the next day so they'll actually come back. Right. And that's something I noticed, uh, not to get too off topic, but I noticed in your uh, your web developer bootcamp course, uh, there is a particular animation where you, you were, I think you were describing... Um, slicing a raise or something there's a slices of bread and there's this this is like this quick audio of ow and i was like oh that's that's really funny this poor bread is like being sliced to death like but it's like stuff like that complaints on that there was like you know the anti-bread cruelty oh man (laughs) <laughs> I loved it. No, I just, it's like those little things that, like you say, though, just keeps it snappy and, and almost entertaining, but in an educational way where you're not sitting back and like being passive about it, where you can, you, you can feel motivated and entertained, but still learn a lot of stuff while doing it. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's pretty much throughout this Python course too, like, like we've been talking. Uh, so final question from a student says, my brain that's used to C++ can't cope with Python. What would be your advice to me to think in Python more efficiently and understand the essence of the language better? So, I mean, I I can actually relate to that because I spend a lot of time programming, say, in Swift, um, building iOS apps. 
And then I go to a different language like JavaScript or Python and my brain just can't like, it can't switch over very quickly. It's, there's a long period of time where, you know, in JavaScript, I'm like just writing Swift code. And, you know, in Python, I'm also just adding like, you know, funk keywords. It, but, you know, this, is, this, is, this happens, right? Like it's not, this student, if you're out there listening, like, don't worry, you're not the only one. We all suffer from this. But I think the, the key to it is that if you spend a fixed period of time programming in one language, you get really, really comfortable with it. But, you know, as modern developers, like we more or less need to know more than lang one language. As much as I have my own sort of favorite languages, there's projects that come up or there's clients that need X and Y and Z, and you have to learn new um new techniques, new tools. And, you know, I went through a period of time where like the only thing I knew was a hammer and everything looked like a nail. And yeah, you could probably build like a web server in Swift, but like that's really painful. So I think C++ is wonderful and um, it's super fast. It's really great. But when you're coming to Python, you're coming to a higher level, higher level language, right? So you're spending less time actually doing the mechanical parts. Like you don't really have to manage your memory that much. You don't really have to think about like what's happening, you know, at compiler level. Um, I think like when I was making the course, I was looking through like what are some of the top uh, companies or websites um, or services that are built with Python. And you've got things like Instagram, Uber, um, Google. And the best quote that I saw um, from Google, like in terms of their tech stack was, use Python if you can and use C++ if you can't. And I just love that because it's like, wow, this is, this is pretty much like how, you know, you would approach this problem where, yeah, there are like things which requires number crunching, which requires speed, which requires efficiency. And you got your C++ or C for that. But then there's things where it's more important for the programmer to think about the architecture or the logic or the, um, you know, how you're building out your, um, your entire software product, right? So I think if you're coming from C++, it will take a little bit of time to get used to it. But once you do, it will feel quite good when there's like robots behind the scenes who are like cleaning up after you. Like the analogy I like to use is I'm just like a really messy cook. And, um, you know, <laughs> when I have to cook by myself, there's just like a mountain of mess. But sometimes when you're using like a modern language like Swift or Python, it's almost like you've got some sort of like little house elf that's like cleaning up behind you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. Angela, is there anything else you'd like to add about anything? Um, so I think um, I was taking a look at um, realtoughcandy.io and I was really struck by like, you know, your big title, which is like escape tutorial help. And it is so, so important. It's something that like we have been trying to figure out for the longest time because, you know, students come to us, they're like, you know, we've done your boot camp, we've done this, we've done that. And I still don't know how to like make my own project. Like, what do I do? What's that key step? And a lot of students will look at this course and they'll see like, oh yeah, there's a lot of hours, but then, you know, by day 50, how come like the videos are going less and less and like what, what's happening here, right? And one of the things that like, that we really wanted to tell people is like, this really is by design. The idea is that as you go from a beginner to an intermediate level, you are impeded by the speed of video. So personally, I don't really like to study new programming languages or frameworks through video. I need text because I can just understand it so much quicker and I can get up and running, right? So in the course, we wanted to give people increasing levels of challenge and also getting them um, to become more familiar with the ways that 
professional developers would work. And that's through, you know, specs, that's through documentation, that's through a lot of hunting around, let's be honest. Um, and like, you know, if you don't experience that pain and you're suddenly out of the sort of coddle of like a, a tutorial, you can be really scared. But we wanted this safe space where you can ask questions, you can, you know, make mistakes, but still you're kind of being expected to work at a more professional level and the sort of spoon feeding comes off and you're kind of going about on your own way to like professional programmer hoods. So it. that was just one of the things I thought about. I love it. Great, a great job on this course, Angela. Like seriously, this is this is a banger. And just how long has this course been out? Like not even that long, right? Like um, I think it's been out for maybe a month, maybe less than a month. But less it's month. It, like what? it's like I cannot like stress like just how how much I've wanted to get it out there because we've been working on this for like a year and a half. And oh, like, wow. there was one point where I was like, I cannot take this anymore. Like I have to put it, like I have to just let it be free and get people to see it. Well, but it's yeah. a banger. Yeah, you got like 50,000 some people I think enrolled. Like it's, it's yeah, really it's, up, so. People are really um, liking the concept of the sort of hundred guided hundred days of code. Right. And yeah. Well, great job. Really yeah, I, you stepped up the you stepped up the standard on you to me, I think with this one. This is just a really cool concept like we were talking about. And it's just like it's exciting. You know, and especially someone who reviews courses and stuff, I'm always looking for something different and I think like you nailed it. So, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. I think we thought if anybody uh, wanted to um, sign up for it, if you use the code real tough candy all caps you can get it for $12.99 or whatever that is in your local currency. Developers, um, you heard it. If that, yeah, that helps. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, great developers. You heard it. All caps, real tough candy. Get the course for cheap. You won't regret it. Angela, thank you so much for coming on the channel thank today. You. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. I had a great time. <laughs> too. All right. I, this is always an awkward sign off, but um, we're going to, because there's like a 20 second lag on YouTube. So I never know really where we are. <laughs> so sorry, YouTube. Thank you, Angela. And I will hopefully chat with you sometime soon with your next course or wherever you find yourself. So, yeah.